exist together in a yeah the lion house. king it is here it is expected to have massive box office records break box office records but that is also good news for lions in the wild Tammy sutherland joins us now to talk a little bit more about the impact the Lion King is having on uh, the real lions. Yeah, exactly. And so conservationists out there worldwide are hoping that the remake of this movie and this resurgence mm -hmm. when it comes to the Lion King will actually help raise awareness when it comes to the population and what's actually happened to the population. Well, it really is frightening. I mean, they're being hunted out. They're, they're losing their territory, which is the biggest thing, right? That they is... have no land for them. And they're clashing with civilization. Exactly. So 90% of, more than 90% of their habitat has been lost and it's due to um, several things, whether it's uh, uh, human um, conflict, we have land development as well, uh, livestock and farming. So they're losing their population, but also the numbers are staggering when it comes to the population that currently is on this planet. So 50 years ago, there were an estimated 200,000 lions right across mm -hmm. Africa. And now there's approximately 20,000 left. So wow. those numbers, it's dropped um, significantly. And there's been a f more than 40% decline since the last Lion King was released. So that's why Which conservationists are I mean, hoping. That was only 20, that was that, 25 that years ago. That was 25 right? years ago. And that's why conservationists are hoping that the resurgence of the popularity of the Lion King will then lead to this, uh, you know, just reawareness mm -hmm. when it comes to And what the are they population. doing with the money? That they're, they're also helping with money, right? They are. So Disney it has started a... A fund called Protect the Pride. It's a campaign mm -hmm. to raise money for the Lion Recovery Fund so that they can help with this. And some of the conservationists who we spoke to uh, are world renowned. So mm -hmm. we have one couple, Derek and Beverly Joubert. If you have not heard of them, you probably are not a wildlife enthusiast. If you are, these people are absolutely the top of the crop when it comes to conservationists. They've worked for 38 years very closely with National Geographic. They filmed award-winning documentaries over the last 38 years. They live in Botswana, and not only did they consult on the original film, mm -hmm. but they also told us as well that they uh, have seen some early sneak peeks of the current remake. Take a listen. All right. I can actually, we've had a look at some of the, the early drawings and early renditions of them. And it's very impressive and it's quite nice actually because one of the biggest deficits that we have is education and conservation. And so this sets the groundwork for speaking to kids about lion conservation and there's not much of that going around up now. So We founded the National Geographic Big Cat Initiative and that is putting projects on the ground. We give out grants to, uh, we've got over 120 grants right now, right through Africa in 27 countries. And that's one way to work with communities and look at the, the solutions, solution driven to try and protect lions. It is so difficult to find the balance between Absolutely. You know, the people who live there and the lions that we want to see thrive and be healthy. All right, you gotta and make that are. circle of life. And the reason why we actually yeah, had access to Derek and Beverly mm -hmm. Joubert is because of our resident wildlife enthusiast, yes. Julian Victor, which is an TVA I extraordinaire, think. and wears a great t-shirt, and has a, a very appropriate t-shirt on today to talk about the lions, and mm -hmm. it was actually Julian's pitch that made us want to look a little bit further into the numbers and bring this story to, to light for people here have, at home. Have you been involved with them? Um, Derek, Derek and Beverly, I actually interned with for them three years ago when I went to Africa. Oh, wow. So I met them. I've looked up to them since I was a kid, so I got a chance to meet them in New York City, and then I kind of talked to them through just a chance. They're like, hey, you, we, you, if you want to go for an internship, and I took the chance, and since then I had that, and I asked them if they wanted to be a part of it, and they said sure, and I went down to Washington, and I interviewed them. What was that experience like, being interning with them? Uh, that experience was amazing because as a kid, I always wanted to go to Africa, and seeing a lion was in the wild was something was on my bucket list and i remember when we were pulling up and then we just we pulled the corner of this uh thicket and then we opened and you see these two huge male lions and it was just like a whoa and then yeah. it, and then and then it was away and then sleeping at night and hearing them war seeing them roaring was a little terrifying but it was it was still amazing yeah. experience which i'd go back tomorrow awesome All right. Thanks so much, Julian. And again, it was Julian's idea in this Beautiful. whole pitch. It was great. So coming up tonight on City News at 5 and 6, we're going to have more. And as well, later on this morning, we're going to be talking to someone locally right here in the GTA mm -hmm. who says that as a Canadian, you can still help from half a world away. Right. Absolutely. Perfect. We've also got more coming up on BT, including want to travel like a VIP but don't have the cash.
We've got a solution. It can be yours. Yeah, be sure to catch Winston C. Reasoning here in an hour's time with the details.